Welcome to Christ Open Door Community Church. We are located at 5265 Alameda Drive, Suite C in Orlando, Florida, 32808. We gather every Sunday at 1115 a.m. and we would love to have you. source your pleasures that rage war in your members. You lust and do not have. So you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain. So you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Mm. You ask and you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. You adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whatever, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you not think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he has made to dwell in us but he gives a greater grace therefore it says God is opposed to the proud but give grace to the humble submit therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you verse number 8 draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. The word of God for the people of God, the battle from within, the inward warfare. While Christian life is one of peace, it is also of consistent warfare. As we serve Christ and seek to extend his kingdom, we are at war 
with evil powers of darkness. We are engaged in battle between God's truth and the lives of Satan. The captive captivates the minds of the unbelieving. And as every Christian knows, there is a fierce inner battle that goes on between the flesh and the spirit, the old man and the new man. And a lot of this is really kind of mirrors uh, Ephesians chapter 6 where Paul talks us and he admonishes us to what? To put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to do what? To stand against the wiles of the enemy. And the word wiles can be also translated schemes of, of the tactics of the enemy. Because the reason why he used the word wiles because there's many tactics that the enemy used to try to destroy the, the believer. Yeah. He used many different avenues. He, he could use drunkenness or he could use drugs or he could use illicit lifestyles or he could use idolatry. Therefore, we idolize certain things. We idolize the car. We idolize the job. We idolize uh, our children in a, in a sense. We idolize so many things. The enemy used many different wiles or many different tactics to try to get you off this course of this Christian journey. And that's why Paul, and that's why uh, James had to address these issues that was transpired in this, the church at Ephesus is because of the fact that what was uh, going on in the midst of the congregants and the people of God. And there was rich people at this particular time, even in this congregation. And that's why in, in one particular chapter, I think it's chapter 3, that he had to address the issue of favoritism. And then he starts out in chapter 1, he said, Count it all joy, my brother, when you go through various trials. Yes. Our life is, 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 we experience so many different trials on so many different levels. Yes. But the greatest war is not the war that's fought on foreign soil or the war, the war that's fought on our particular soil as a nation, but the greatest war goes on inwardly. Yes, sir. That's what Paul said, what he said in, in Romans chapter 7, he said, who can deliver me from this body of death? Oh, wretched man that I am. In other words, he looked at even though his inner man was renewed by the power and the option of the Holy Spirit because he had he had been transformed from the inside, but yet and still we have to deal with this unredeemed flesh. Yes, Lord. And then in the book of Galatians, he addressed the same issue in chapter 5, 17. He said, if you walk by the Spirit, then therefore you will not be succumbed to the things of the flesh. The flesh always is in conflict with the Spirit. Yes, sir. The flesh tells you all to stay home and get a little rest. Yes, sir. The Spirit says, no, I need to go this Sunday. The flesh says one thing, the Spirit says another thing. And if we're not careful, we'll be hung up more on the carnal things and then we'll neglect the spiritual things. But there comes a time in our life that we need to be caught at a specific time. And then there's another time that we got to still rely on the Holy Spirit. Even though we may have acquired knowledge, even though we may have went to school, even though we may read books to enhance our mind, to further ourselves, to strengthen our minds, to be able to think in a different uh, plateau, but at the same time, we still need to consult the God of the mind, the God of the body, the God of the universe, because no matter how smart you may be, no matter how well endowed you may be astute, but at the same time, we still need to consult God. Yes, sir. On many different facets. And the Bible says in James, let's go back to uh, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, what is it? This source of quarrels and conflicts among you is the source, not your pleasures, that rage war in your body. This, at this particular time, now he's dealing with unbelievers that they are fighting against the evil desires, even though they may want to relinquish them and give them up. But at the same time, you cannot walk on this journey without God. No, sir. That's what the Bible says. He that lack wisdom, do what? Let him ask. In faith. Then he also said in prayer, he said, when you pray, pray in faith. But the man that prays not in faith, he ought not to expect anything from the Lord. Yes, sir. Sometimes people pray and they, and they pray and they pray, but they don't believe in the thing. Let me tell you, you can't accomplish nothing if you don't believe in what you're doing. Amen. Amen. If you're always looking for somebody to co-sign 
down on something oh, in your life, oh, yeah. you'll never accomplish anything. No, you got to first of all believe in yourself. When God gives you a vision, when God gives you something, you can't always look for other people to be in an agreement with God gave you. Why? Because the one God gave it to you and not them. Amen. When God gives you the order, when God tells you to do something, you ought to do it. And you don't have to call a prayer partner. You don't have to call a best friend. You don't need an acquaintance to sign off on it. You don't need nobody to validate what God has spoken in your spirit. Yes. Sometimes we miss the move of God. Yes, sir. Or we miss the things of God. Why? Because we're looking for somebody else to validate what God has already told us to do. That's right. And when God gives you an order, when God tells you to do something, all you have to do is do it. When you're faithful and you continue to be faithful, it don't matter who's looking, it don't matter what's presented before you. I never forget in the book of Daniel, chapter one. Daniel knew, number one, that he wasn't going to even partake in the king's delicacies. So here, the king had presented something, and he had presented the food, the choice food, the choice wine. In other words, everything was luxurious to a point, but Daniel knew that he could not partake. It wasn't just a Daniel fast. Some people call it a Daniel fast. But actually, the food was sacrificed to idols. Okay. And Daniel knew it. Daniel said, no. I'm holding fast to the truths of the things I believe. Yes, so therefore, I would not indulge in things that have been dedicated to something else. And sometimes, if you're not careful, the enemy will have you to indulge in things that goes against your Christian character, that goes against your Christian values, and then all of a sudden, now because you want to save a friend, or you want to save a relationship with a family member, but it comes at a high price that when you walk this life, not what the Bible tells us so plainly that we ought to count up the cost. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. It costs you something to be a Christian. Yes. It costs Jesus everything. It costs his life. And even though he died on the cross, and we call that in theology the doctrine of substitution. In other words, we traded places. He took our place, and we got in his place. And therefore, he brought redemption. Therefore, justification came in the picture. And therefore, we, every day that we live, we experience sanctification. Yes, sir. And it's all predicated on the fact and the things that God has done. Amen, somebody. Then he says in verse 4, you adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility to God? Therefore, who wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Yes. You adulterers. Now, some people may say, well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? What do you mean by that, you adulterers? They was unfaithful. You have some people that walk with God. But yet and still be unfaithful. Why? Because they're dedicated to everything else. And it saddens me that we live in a day and age where we're more dedicated to tangible things and to the things of the spirit. But if we use the same energy we use on our jobs, we use in our doctor's appointments, when we use the things that we deem important, going to picnics and barbecues and hanging out with family and having a good time. But if we value and use the same energy in our personal Bible study. I'm just not talking about coming together in a building and assembling together as a collective contained unit. Amen, somebody. But what I'm saying is use and exude that same energy when it comes to your personal prayer life. Amen. Yeah. Are you just that dedicated? Yeah. Are you willing to pray for an hour? Are you willing to read your Bible just for one hour? But you can sit and laugh and play cards and have a good for many hours. You can watch TV for many hours. But can you watch with God for just one hour? My God. Is an hour too long to pray to a God that you say is your source? Is your way maker? All that sounds good. But that's why it's a warfare going on. It is so conflictual. Why? Because the spirit always want you to try to reason and rationalize a situation. And then we try to think out a situation. Well, you know, the Lord, he knows my heart. Be careful with that. Ah, he because he actually does. That's right. He do. And the Bible said the heart is deceitful above all and what desperately wicked. Yes. 
He knows. He just does. He knows you intimately. That's why we have to be real with the Lord. We have to be sincere in our walk with God. And that's why James was chastising this church and he was telling them, even though some people look at it from a practical standpoint, but there's a lot of theological concept in the book of James. And he said, therefore, who wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. That's the last thing you want to be. It's an opposition. That's the last thing you want to be. It's one fighting with God. If you go back to Acts chapter 5, after the fact, when, when, when the, uh, the, the one came and he told him, he said, if this be of God, you can't overthrow it. But if it be of God, you it will soon come to know if it's not of God. But he said, let me tell you something. The one that had taught Paul, and he had told him to stand before the Sanhedrin court, and he told him, he said, let me tell you something. If you come against this, it'll almost be like you fighting against God. My God. And you don't want to be fighting yourself, fighting against God. And that's why many times we are blocked in so many areas that doors we want to walk through. Sometimes people call it the wrong door had to close for the right door to open. No, the right door had to close for the right door to open. He mad somebody. Because let me tell you something. Even though that's a front door and we have a back door, but if a fire is at the front door, that's a right door because that is an exit door. But if the fire is at the front, the right door need to open is the one in the back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sometimes the right door has to stay shut so the right door can come open. Wow, wow. Amen. Hey, both of them are right doors. Both of them are good doors, but the right door has to come open. There are many doors of opportunity we face in life, but if we're not careful, yes, that's why he told me, you're a daughter of general. You have befriended the world. Hallelujah. And it became hostility yes. towards the Lord. Or do you think that the scripture says to no purpose? Listen to this. He's still talking to me. He jealously desires the spirit whom he has made to dwell where? In us. He gives greater grace. Therefore, God says, he opposed the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, he says, submit therefore to God, but resist the devil. My God. Resist. What do the word resist mean? That means to take a stand against. My God. We have to take a stand. We live in a day and age where everybody's taking a stand for what they, what they believe. But are we taking a stand? Are you willing to take a stand when you have a private conversation and public conversation when you know other people that are doing things contrary to your belief and the conversation comes up? Are you willing at that moment to take a stand? Oh my God. Whether it's your cousin, whether it's your uncle that's wrapped up in it, whether it's your, your let's bring it even closer, whether your daddy and your mama wrapped up in it or your granddaddy wrapped up, are you willing to take a stand? My God. Or are we going to be neutral? Well, you know, we don't want to run. We don't want to make, make them feel like we're not compassionate. That's the enemy working on yes. Because I'm going to tell you how you know you love them. Because you're willing to warn them and tell them exactly. the truth. Exactly. When, you, when you tell somebody the truth, the unadulterated truth, that is love. Yes. But some have become friends of the world. Friends My of the God. Lord. My in God. other words, having this this intimate joy, this this compelling, amen, joy. Therefore, the desires of the world. Long as long as it feels good, I'm all right with it. Yeah. But just because it feels good to you, that don't mean it's good for you. Amen. A lot of things feel good to you, that don't mean it's good for you. If you ask somebody that used to use drugs, snort powder, shoot crack, they may, they may tell you how good it feels to you, That's right. but that don't mean it's good for you. Right. You may see somebody get drunk as cooler brown, they may tell you it's good to you, and it makes you feel good, and you may feel great, but that don't mean it's good for you. Because the more you keep, the more you keep consuming what we call sclerosis of the liver, yes. the more you keep smoking cigarettes. And it may be good to you, but that don't mean it's good for you. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden you're having breathing complications. You can't breathe. But let's move beyond those particular things that you can smell. Let's talk about the food. Yeah. Oh, a lot of food may be good to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
but that don't mean it's always good for you. Amen. Especially in the amount of a compensation of, of the amount that you consume. You, you, you should eat a whole ham <laughs> and then wonder why your blood pressure is high. Wow. You should eat a whole lot of fish and wonder why you're developing other things in your body because life requires a balance on all levels. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's time that you have to, you should spend with your significant other, with your wife. It's time you should spend with your children and everybody need to know in the household that this this time, your time coming, but but I got another time that I need to do. Why? Because every aspect of your life requires balance. I mean, sometimes you meet and run into people that are workaholics. All they do is just work, 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 yeah. and you ain't accomplish nothing more when you got two or three jobs than you did when you got one. Because the enemy wants to rob you of time. Yes, sir. Tools, investments, materials, energy. If the enemy robs you of your time, you ain't going to even have time for yourself. Hey, that's real. My God. The enemy wants to rob you of time. The reason why? Because he wants to keep you in a stupor. Therefore, you're not growing. You're not advancing. You're not progressing. You think you're progressing, but why? Because you bought an outfit. Huh. Mm -hmm. And it called a priority readjustment. And when we make the, the readjustments in our mind, then therefore we'll get better results. Yeah. So that's why here, James had to talk to this mixed current of, current of people because the things that they was doing and the things that was transpired in the church at Ephesus, that way he says submit to God. Yeah. But, there's a but, but resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Yeah. But again, you got to stand against him. Come closer to God. Come in, that means to be drawing closer. The, the more we draw closer to the Lord. How do I draw closer to the Lord? One of the best ways to do it is through His Word. Amen. You thought I was going to say pray. Through His Word. The best way to know God is through His Word. Don't let nothing substitute the Word of God. Nothing. Prayer is good. Jesus taught us to pray. And a matter of fact, they call it the, 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 the Jesus prayer, but really it is it's the disciples' prayer because the Bible says he taught them yeah. how to pray. Yes, sir. This is not the, the, the Lord's prayer. It's, it was for the disciples. He taught them how to pray. So one of the best ways to communicate with God outside of prayer, the primary way you should communicate with God is through his word because in his word bringeth life. In his word bringeth healing. In his word bringeth deliverance. In his word. In his word. His word is a light. It illuminates. It brings forth something. It reveals something. Yes. Wars and fights, these are between people in the church, not internal conflict in the individual people, but wars speak of the conflict in general. Fights speak of manifestation. Discord in the church is not in God's design, but results from the tares. And we know who the tares is. Those are the false believers. Those are the heretics. Those are the ones that come to church and just onlookers. They spectators, speculators, all fruit inspectors. They don't really come looking. They don't really come in to offer the sacrificial prayer. They don't come to add anything, but they just come to watch. Okay. To point out the flaws, to point out the yes. this, to point out yes. that. Oh, we don't have this, and oh, we don't have that. And how are we going to do this, and how are we going to do that? But then the true believers, the weak, they say the same God that can, the same God that will. We walk by faith yes, Lord. and not by sight. Yes. Are you a sight walker or are you a faith walker? Yes. When you walk by faith, it, 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 it transitions the whole thing of how you look at it. You can't look at nothing different until you get a new mind. Amen. That's what Romans 12, he said, and be not what conform. So many people are conforming to the conformity of everything. They try to look like, they try to mirror, they try to copycat. Even from the world to the church, everybody's trying to copycat something. But God is looking for sincere people and not a bunch of copycats and phonies. Yes, real. You got to be sincere in your walk with God. Desire, amen, in the Greek word means hedonism, which we get the word passionate desire for worldly pleasure. These people are passionate about the word. That's why they can't relinquish really 
for show. Yes. That's why they became a friend to the world because they're passionate about it. They're passionate about everything because it feels good. Again, it gratifies the flesh. It gratifies the mind. It gratifies the, the, what they want did and there. That sensational desire, but your sensational desire can cause you to go to hell. Oh my God. Look at Lazarus and the rich man. But the Bible says he fed sumptuously, clothed in purple. He was very rich, and Lazarus just sitting at the gate. Amen. The dogs would even come over and lick the sores to bring some form of relief. In. He got plenty, but don't want to share none of it. Both of them died. The Bible said both of them died. One woke up in the bosom of Abraham. In other words, he didn't woke up in the presence of God, and the other one woke up in him. Amen. Because his heart, amen, was so interwoven into his riches. And let me tell you something. Say to God, be sincere in the things you do. Because God is eternal. He therefore knows the things of the heart. Yeah. He knows oh. our heart. The Bible says, because out of the abundance of the heart, what the mouth oh. speaks. Hmm. Why you see it coming out of their mouth? Because it's in their heart. I don't wonder why they said what they said because it's in their heart. Yeah. I don't wonder why they acting the way they acting because it's in their heart. They do real good trying to come. They impress. They really do real good trying to cover. But sooner or later, the interior motive is going to reveal itself from the heart. Amen. Your members. When he talked about members, he wasn't referring to church members, but he was referring to your bodily members. And this is. That battle that goes on with the tug of war that's happening in the heart of the person. Yes. And one of the greatest places in the tug of war is amongst family, and is amongst uh, occupational, is amongst business transactions. Yes. And that's when a lot of times there is a lot of conflict because it's a degree. We want to save relationship. Mm -hmm. Or in this day and age, you, you, we want to save face. Mm -hmm. And he says, and you do not ask. But you act submiss. Uh -huh. This therefore means acting in an evil manner, motivated by personal gratification. Yes. So many people are motivated by personal gratifications. Yes. That's why they can't embrace the things of God. Yes, That's why they can't see a real transformation in their life. You can't shout your way out of the saints of God. Yes, you, you can decree and declare all you want to do. But if you ain't sincere in God's word, if you ain't rooted and anchored and grinding in the principles and the precepts and the law, which means the instructions of God's word, you can do all these outward extremities, these things that sound pretty, just because somebody come up with some new concept of ways to use phraseology to make you feel good. I call it intentional language. But if you're not sincere, all you're doing is just losing weight, burning energy. Yes, Amen. The Bible says you pray, you pray amiss. The Greek word describes love as a sense of strong emotion. When, we, when you see people exude the attitude of friendship with the world, that's a strong emotion. That's a drawing. And that's why it's so complicated for some people to come out of the world. Why? Because they're so drawn. It's like a magnet. You know, if you put two magnets too close, all of a sudden they will attach themselves. And that's all the world wants to do is to drag you away from the things of God. Father enough yes. to attach itself to you. It's like a leech that's sucking the very life out of you. And the more you try, it feels like the energy is being depleted out of you. Why? Because something has an attached to it. That's why I'm careful with the people I deal with. I know that's real. Just because they talk God, that don't mean they're godly. Yes. Just because they got a balanced call, that don't mean nothing. Yes. Amen, somebody. You got to get around people long enough. And just because somebody mentions something, that don't mean nothing. Because you still got to look at the fruit. Because you know in your tree that has been planted and pruned and worked on by God. God had to fertilize it. He had to do much work on your tree. And you cannot afford to allow your tree to be attached yes. to a tainted or contaminated source. Amen. The war Jesus. that the old man rages is in a guerrilla war. Mm. It does not wear red coats and come marching towards you in formation 
so that you can see it coming. It uses snipers, landmines, hidden road bomb, roadside bombs, and civilians posing as friends. When in reality, listen to this, they are enemies. In other words, sin is subtle. It's subtle. See, it'll take you out to dinner. Yes, sir. And I'm talking about a nice fifty dollar porterhouse steak. Hey, man, with the the garlic drippings and the the, the butter right. on the top of the shrimp laid to the side right. with the broccoli and cauliflower and the asparagus right. on the side, and it looks very good. Yes, sir. Oh man, it looks good. Them pretty lamb chops, amen. They just sit up there just pretty with the rosemary, just spread it all over. Them baby back ribs with the trout rub and the barbecue sauce. See, it will take you out to eat and pay for the whole thing. And a tip. A good tip. That's what it would do. Yes, sir. And it opposes himself. Because it opposes himself like he's a friend. Yeah. They even come around. You, you know what? The enemy, the enemy is so justice. He'll even come around and help you. Mm. My God. Mm. He will help you and labor with you. Mm. Because he has an end goal. See, the enemy is dedicated, amen, all the way to the end until it gets you. That's why he, that's why he don't stop. Mm. Amen, somebody. Why do you think the devil is always working in so many different facets? Because he hasn't gotten you yet. Sometimes he may get your attention, right. but that's not good enough. Right. He wants you. He want you and all of you. Yeah. He may keep you away from the church for a while. Yeah. He may keep you away for a while. Yeah. But then all of a sudden you find yourself back in the fold. All right, because his work ain't complete. His work is complete in you, not just when you die, but when you end up where he is for eternity. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Amen, somebody. Wow. And that's what the Bible says. He's, he's an enemy that's consistent at what he does. It lures you into his traps where you are ambushed. The enemy is ambushed, and most importantly, he's very relentless. The enemy is relentless. He doesn't stop. And that's why James said, You are adulterers. Why? Because the things they was doing, the way their heart was turning, they was, amen, they were spiritually adulterous. They was coming into what we call spiritual adultery. Yeah. It was cheating on God. Yes, my God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Saying one thing. Anyway, Jesus said it so plainly to one thing. He said, with your mouth. mouth. Oh, you ugly. Oh, oh you ever had people that tell you they love you? Oh, oh, Sister Princess, I love you so much. Oh, girl, let me tell you. Ooh, let me tell you. And then all of a sudden, now you get a whiff of another conversation. They crucify you in the mouth. I mean, talking all bad about who she, who they think they is. And blah, blah. It's amazing how soon as you progress. Yes. Say it. All right. Oh, they talk a lot. And sometimes it's not the battle from the outside. Yes, sir. It's in the inside. Yes, Lord. Amen, somebody. You can't sing all the songs. You can't do everything. You ain't going to be good at everything. No, sir. But if I find a lane Hallelujah. that God has put me in, yes, whether it's an usher, it's a dope keeper, yes, I want to be the best dope keeper I can. Give me my badge, white glove. I don't even need yes, glove. Amen, somebody. Good morning. Welcome to Christ Open with our community church. How can we be a blessing to you today? Yes. Amen. Have a seat. Yes. Amen. Somebody, how do you want to be the best you can be? Yes. If you're going to be a deacon, be the best deacon you can be. Amen. If you're going to be a minister, be the best minister. Whatever you do, be the best you can do. Yes, sir. Give God your all. It's sad that we'll work overtime in the world for things in the world and we'll work other time in the church. I mean, we'll work till we buy. Ooh, Lord, I'm tired. Well, I got, I got one more paper. I got to put it together. Ooh, Jesus. I just got to make it. Oh, Lord. And then, you, then when it comes to things of God, there's the availability. Yeah. But he's my source, really. Really. Amen. It's called prioritization. Amen. I'm breaking this in. I'm breaking this. Now, it's 26 and 40 my says this. All the rest of my scriptures are right on my time. I got to get to this. I got to get to this. Amen. I, I know we got something at five. But it says this. Keeping watch and praying that you may not enter temptation. Why? 
there's a hyphen there. And the hyphen is there for a reason. It's a the spirit. The spirit. The inner man is so willing. But the flesh is weak. The tenderness of his plea is touching. Christ himself was well acquainted with this feeling of human infirmities, but yet without sin. Jesus went through everything we went through. He was tempted at all points, but without sin. That's what the Bible says. Keep watch. Watch means alertness. Ah. Be alert. Everything that looked like something, they don't mean it's something. That's right. Amen, somebody. People pay you a lot of money and still don't like you. Yes, sir. If money don't want to go over let me tell you something. You better look at the old L.A. Clippers, Donald Sterling. Come on, somebody. You got to call their name. Paul did it when he stood before the king. He said, and they thought many of them, amen, came against me. The copper smith came again. He talked about the accused. He yes. talked about those that was working against him. Yes. My God. Hymenaeus and Philetus, they was over, they been trying to overthrow the faith of some. Just coming in, just disrupting the church. Yes. You got people in the world, they don't, they can not like you and still pay you well. My God. If that's all you're looking for. Yes. Some people will invite you to their house and feel like you. God ain't spirit of that. Oh, yeah. And, and, and cook. Uh, and still don't like you. Take you out to eat and still don't like you. So we have to be very careful that we're not becoming friends with the world where God has already told us that we should come out. That way he said, come out from amongst who? Them, and be ye what separated, says the Lord. You can't be amongst them and then somebody coming out from amongst them. My God. There, there, there's a position you have to take. Yes, sir. You got to make your mind up. Do you want to be a part of the them or you want to come out from amongst them and be with us? Yes. Amen, somebody. He said, keep me watch and pray that you do not enter temptation. Because it's not it's not hard to enter temptation. No, sir. It's not keeping watch and being perfect. In other words, staying alert. To win the war within, we must understand the magnitude of the inner conflict. To win the war from within, we must understand the magnitude of the inner conflict. There's conflict that's going on inside. That's why in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, and the Bible says, and Satan stood against David, and after all the victories and things that David went through, but the enemy entered his heart. And said, so let me number my men, let me number the things I got. All these victories. Look, look, look what I have accomplished. Ah! Yes, and the Bible says because of David's sin, 70,000 men feel dead. Yes. Don't underestimate your small or big decision. It may be small. Well, it ain't that bad. I ain't going to worry about it. it. It ain't that serious. No, it's more serious than what you think it is. Yes, sir. Mm. Everything that's being orchestrated in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of the natural, is, is bigger than what you think it is. Yeah. If you go back a few presidents ago, when they signed the, uh, the legalization uh, of, of Elliot Bug, what they call gay marriage, some people downplayed it, they didn't look at it that bad, but now it's having such a matricular effect that we are debating about little boys that dress up like girls going into the bathroom with your grandkids, with your daughter, now we're debating the fact about girls that all of a sudden now that the enemy has used their mind to go into the boys' bathroom and tell them, nah, I'm a boy today. That's right. That's it all starts from somewhere. Yeah. It's like a little big malignant mold. It starts real small. It's almost like gangrene. But if you don't put it into a system where it can retard the corrosion before it spread, it spreads so fast like gangrene, before it know it, it consumes everything. Yeah. That's why hate speech is so strong. Why? Because it started small. Yeah. And before you know it, so many people bought it. And then now we live in a world that you, you we live in a world now that, that it's almost like the 60s and the 50s and the 40s. It's stuff that we're doing it systematically. Yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah. We're, we're not, we're not, no, we're not walking down the, the, the road. We yeah. would definitely do that. With, with the N word on the side, no, we, 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 
They, they, they may be off the rocker, but they ain't that far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's the world. We yes, sir. Because everything starts with something. And the more you partner with the world and the things of the world, and these things are going to continue to accumulate. They're going to continue to grow. But one thing James had to call the church and check was, he said, don't let it be happening among you. Yeah, that's right. Now that's going to happen. So that's why we, don't, well, we need to submit ourselves, therefore, to God. Because the things that they were submitting to, they was lining up under everything else. It's up for God's final authority. Romans 6, 6 through 7 says this. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. And therefore, sin no longer, we're no longer practice sin. We're no longer driven by sin, but we're not accepted from sin. Now, I know some people teach you, once you become saved, you ain't going to say no more. I'm going to be who you is. Yes, because as long as you're still in this humanness, in this flesh, amen, one of the greatest people, saying people do, is, 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 is uh, self-centeredness. Or self-righteousness. Thank you. Self-righteousness. In other words, I arrived to a place that I don't do nothing wrong. I don't know people like that. I know some people personally like that. Yes, sir. And I caution you, I said, you better be careful with that. Yes, sir. You don't do nothing wrong. I don't do nothing. I don't say nothing. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Just quit equating sins with things you drink, speak, okay. and spill. Yes, sir. What about the feet yes, that run quick to mischief? Yes. People that sow seeds of discord among the brethren. All right. Yes. Now, those abominations, those ain't just sins. That's a whole other level. Yes. Hey, man, the Bible calls those abominations. Mm -hmm. He said, and hey, you know, that, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin, for one who has died has been set free. The one who's the one that died, Jesus Christ, he has set us free from this. Done away, that means to render powerless. No longer, amen, has a power over us. We have been free from the attachments of the things of the enemy. Why? Because Jesus paid the price on the, on the cross of eternity. Therefore, we can embrace the things of God. One of the marks of a new of new birth is that God gives you new desires. Yes. God changes the mind. Oh. He gives you new desires. You ain't caught with the stuff on your own. Mm -hmm. It's God gave you the energy. You ain't never you ain't, you ain't never want to be serving nothing on a Saturday to strangers you don't know. You said, no, I need to be somewhere aquatical or the sea world or out of the barbecue having a good time or on a vacation or on a boat or a cruise or whatever. You, you, you didn't have that desire. But as God worked on you and brought you to a place of maturity, yeah. you started realizing, hey, man, my needs can be set aside sometimes. <laughs> that I can exemplify the Father here in the earth to let people know that are hurting, that are wounded, that, hey, I am a representative of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the work that he has done in me, you can see the clear manifestation of it. So, therefore, I'm reaching out to you to meet your need. And you don't even know me from a can of paint. <laughs> but that's the God we serve based on this transformational power. That is being exuded in us and through us. Therefore, the world can be able to see God. First John 1, 6-9 says this. If we say we have fellowship with Him, listen to this. While we walk in darkness, walk in darkness, this relates to, darkness relates to false teachers and sin or false prophets and sin. But if we walk in the light, walking in the light equates to holiness and a transformed life. Walking in light, what light of what? Light of the truth of the gospel of God. Yes. And we walk in light as he is what? The light, the truth, the holiness, amen, the, the mere example of what we should follow. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, his son cleanses us from all sin. And we say we have no sin. Listen to this. For those people that say they have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, don't be afraid to confess your sin. If you messed up last night, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I repent of the sin. Help me, Lord. Lord, strengthen me, Lord. Don't, don't move away from the things of God because you messed up. Yes. Or you're going through something. That is the best time to come to the hospital. Yes. Don't come to the hospital after the fact. Rick Morris is going to sit in. Come to the hospital after you've been shot four times. Yes. 
That's the best time to come when you need surgery. Yeah. That is the best time to get on God's spiritual operating table yeah. and let him work on you. Yeah. And then it's going to take a while. So after he stitch you up, then we got to move you to the room. Yeah. The room of what? Recovery. Yeah. We all in one room of another. Yeah. You may not be in a room of recovery based on surgery, but you may be in the ICU, amen, for a temporary while. Yeah. You in the intensive yeah. care unit. God is working like God work. Somebody said, let God work on you. The best time to come to church is when all hell is breaking loose. Let God work on you. When you're struggling with stuff, come to the house of God. Give it to God. This is the hospital. This is not some nursing home. This is the hospital. This is a place of healing and deliverance. Don't let the enemy take, make you say, oh, child, I don't know what's going on. I need to stay home today. No. That's the best time. That's right. Because in, in, re in reality, when you're dealing with some sickness, what we do? We 911, especially if it's something dealing with the heart. Oh, but we wow. can't breathe with our 911 with the closet in the real quick. Yes. So when we're being suffocated in the realm of the spirit, when we have some heart problems in the realm of the spirit, that's the, that's the best time mm -hmm. to get in the presence of God. I'm not just talking about coming to a building. But get in the presence of God, the people of God. Right, where God. prayer is being mobile, when it's moving, when the Spirit of God is being moved. That's what the Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 13, that the woman will bow over to you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, somebody. She's in the presence of God. And the Bible says, Whom the daughter of Abraham has bowed low these 13 years or not, she be loosed on the Sabbath day. Yeah. She was in the right place at the right time. Even she didn't, if you go back and read the text, she didn't even ask Jesus for a healing. My God. She wasn't like the 10 lepers in, in Luke 17 when they asked God to have mercy on us. Yeah. And he said, Show, show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says they went. Yeah. They was healed. Yeah. See, the conflict is from within. We can pray on you, pray for you, pray over you. We can give you the word of all day. Yes, Lord. But it's an individual walk at the end of the day. Yes. We all have to come to a place where we have to all make our mind up. Amen. If you want to be strong as a self-contained unit, you have to do what you can do in God's army. Amen. You got to come ready. Like they're doing in the military, they be on attention. I'm ready for this my assignment. Amen. Your assignment may not be mine, but you got one. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't care if they ain't nobody just carry coolers outside. Amen. Somebody. That's your assignment. You the breakdown and you the setup person. Yes. Amen. And do it with joy. Amen. Make sure the coolers are clean. Do it with joy. Yes. Amen. When, when I had assignments, when God gave me assignments, I'd be out there wiping sweat, barbecuing. Amen. This my assignment. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. And if we're like that with our assignments, Watch things grow. If you enjoyed today's message, please leave a like. And if you would like to hear more, please subscribe down below. If you would like to join our CODCC family, email us at CODCCORL at gmail.com. We look forward to seeing you.